Tonight is May 28th, and this is a live recording of session 37 of our D&D campaign, Dungeons and Drogons. Last session, with Calarel defeated and the rift closed, the party made quick work of the imp, the only remaining foe. The area was looted, and the group found hundreds of gold coins, a magic dagger, Calarel's magic horned helm, and the white's magic cloak. Coltane kept the helm, since he keeps all the magic items. Sorrow took the cloak, and Wintier took the dagger, only because Coltane already has a magic weapon and a magic next slot item, of course. The group then mapped out the keep upon Coltane's request to complete Wreckage's mission, then trekked back to Winterhaven. On the way, Coltane recruited Sorrow, Morgan, and Wrecked as new members of the Order of the Drogons. In Winterhaven, the Drogons were greeted by a crowd headed by Lord Padraig. Coltane explained that Calarel had been defeated, and Lord Padraig said that Winterhaven shall forever be in your debt. Wreckage's arsenal of weapons was donated to the Dwarven blacksmith, who turned out to be Wrecked's cousin. Coltane broke the news about Wreckage's death, and the Dwarf blamed himself for not pushing Dwarven armor on him enough. The Drogons then made funeral arrangements for Autumn and Wreckage. On the morrow, the townsfolk gathered in the graveyard for the double funeral. When the time came for anyone to step forward and speak about the dead, Coltane said Wreckage was good people. For Autumn, he explained how she turned out to be the rogue with the heart of gold sacrificing herself to save Zook, and Wintier said for wreckage, good night, sweet prince. As the ceremonies were about to conclude, a figure emerged from the crowd to speak. An older gentleman, a short roundish man wearing curious clothing, a black hat, and a monocle. Coltane recognized him as none other than Jacques Orville Kelly Arabit the Red. He cleared his throat, adjusted his hat, fixed his monocle, smoothed out his vest, cleared his throat again, cracked his knuckles, opened his vest, reached in, pulled out a few sheets of parchment. He held them at arm's length, squinted, held them closer, scrutinized the writing, shuffled through the pages until he found one that he seemed content with. He inhaled deeply and said, Asparagus. He put the papers back in his vest, stepped away, and fell into Wreckage's open grave. The ceremony concluded, and as the crowd dispersed, Wintier and Coltane headed off to have a little conversation about Ninaran. What transpired between them will be revealed tonight. A grand feast was held in honor of the Drogons, songs were sung in their honor, and Lord Padraig gave a speech about their heroism, not their heroine. Just about every town member personally thanked the Drogons. After the feast, the Drogons brought some food and left it on Wreckage's grave. The session ended on the morrow, with the Drogons setting off to Rekt's church. As they marched off into the sunset, we panned over to the graveyard in Winterhaven, to a tombstone that stood over a fresh grave, over which had been lain a bounty of food. The fresh earth stirred. There was a flash of lightning, and a fist erupted from the grave and grabbed a chicken leg. Ah, that's great. And then it stuffed the chicken leg down the chicken's throat? All right, so we're going to begin the night with Wintier and Coltane's conversation. So we're going back into time, rewinding a little bit, back to that graveyard scene. The crowd and had just after dispersed. we go back, after we go back in time, will we then go back to the future? We will go back to the present. Oh. <laughs> but from our perspective of back in the past, we will be going back to the future. Someone find me a horse back. that goes 88 miles per hour. A horse named DeLorean. <laughs> we only sell cats and dogs here. Alright, the crowd had just dispersed. The rest of the Drogons headed off back to Winterhaven, leaving Wintier and Coltane at the graveyard. Coltane remembers where Ninaron's corpse was left, and... If he moves over to that area, he'll find that, for some reason, the corpse is still there. Nothing has been done about it. It's just decomposing. What stage of decomposition is the corpse in? A few days' worth. 
hold on while I murder somebody and wait a few days just to see what sort of... No. Um, so I can assume skin uh, will still be intact to a certain degree. I don't know, is it, has it been ravaged by vermin? Scavengers? Well, first off, does Coltane bring Wintier over to see the body? Coltane <laughs> puts his arm on Wintier's shoulder and says, This may be shocking for you, but I'm sorry. I believe her corpse is still where we left it. This way. Who? What? I mean, I think you'd better show me. Coltane. I hope you understand she attacked us and we suffered our own losses that battle so it skipped our minds to return and bury some of the fallen and Coltane leads him over to the body <laughs> oh man the body is in a sorry state but the face is still recognizable. I don't recognize that face. Oh wait, yes I do. Winter approaches the body, gets down on his knees, and cradles the rotting flesh in his hands, stroking the hair as it pulls away from the scalp, revealing maggots and rot and jibber-jabber. <laughs> if you're not careful, you might get the plague or something. Nina Ron, he says, leaning forward and not quite kissing her on the forehead. You, you really are you. You dead <laughs> body, you. <laughs> what? You really are you? Touch. You really are you. You oh, really you. are you. <laughs> Stroking down her arm, he takes the ring from her left hand on her index finger, the ancient family heirloom that it is, and he puts it in his pocket. I'll always remember you. He says. Coltane approaches and again puts his hand on Winter's shoulder. I'm sorry for your loss. No doubt her actions were the result of compulsion by a terrible evil. That's why it's important that we can defeat these cultists and madmen who threaten innocent lives so that no one needs to suffer like her or you again. Wintir, would you like to join us officially and help us on whatever quests we may go on to protect the innocent of this world? Is this one of those code-worded gay propositions? Because <laughs> if it is, I just might be... So, Wintir... <laughs> Wintir gets up. Faces Coltane, puts an arm on his shoulder, looks him in the eyes, looks through his eyes into his soul, looks through his soul into his heart, and looks through his heart into his gut, where the truth of a man really is. And he says, Coltane, I wanted to hate you. I wanted to blame someone for Nineron's death. Someone who's a complete twat like you. But after what we've been through, after all those evils we faced, I know you are a good people. Although you're not as good people as Wreckage. Wreckage taught me the meaning of good people. And for the Wreckage in all of us, I understand that evil must be fought. I was ready to get up and go home, kick you in the balls, and slap you on the <laughs> nose. But, ah, 
Wreckage was just such a man. And that evil was bad. And it's time I stopped being a pussy. So I... <laughs> <laughs> he puts his other hand... Winter puts his other hand on Coltane's other shoulder and shakes him just vigorously enough to make it seem bromantical instead of violent. And he looks him in the gut and he says because I have a small vocabulary and I can only say says he says Coltane it would be my honor to be good people. A single tear And then he kicks him in the balls anyway. <laughs> Many tears fall out of Coltane's eyes. He clutches his stomach. And he says, Winter, you asshole. Good speech. Welcome aboard. Oh, God. Let's get out of here. You know, that entire sequence, the one thing that baffles me is how the hell did we miss the ring off her finger when we were looting? It's a worthless ring. It only has, it only has sentimental value. Ah. Sentimental... Sentimental it's, value is still value. I'm sure Wreckage it's only would visible take anything elves. away. Wreckage would be like, ooh, shiny thing. It, it's elven skin colored. <laughs> and on, it has a dear. fleshy feel to it. <laughs> So you just cut off a piece of her finger then? <laughs> no, it was a ring. Weren't you paying attention? Come on, Wintir, says Coltane, still grimacing. Let's go be good people for wreckage. And your cousin. <laughs> As an afterthought. His cousin, his cousin wasn't good people. <laughs> she was good people. His cousin was a people. crazy psychopathic bitch that killed us. Only because of evil forces. It's it's like Britney Spears. She was good people until the music industry got her. And I will continue the story. So Winter gets up from already standing up and follows Coltane into the sunset, leaving Ninaron's body rotting in the graveyard. <laughs> this was morning. <laughs> Into the sunrise? You're a great cousin, you know that. And Coltate mutters to him, Kick me in the balls again and I will slap you. Then Winter punches him in the balls. Touché! Oh. Then Winter headbutt- no, that's not. Aww, that's just wrong. So that's the session, right? I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> that essentially concludes our adventures in the Keep on the Shadowfell. Uh, the rest of tonight's session is just going to be a a, uh, a debrief, if you will, a after-action review. Uh, in the meanwhile, those of you who need to level up your characters can do so. Hint, hint. Ding. Doug, check out your character sheet. Ding. Uh. I took over um, Coltane, uh, Sorrow, and uh, Windtear's characters last week, so I added up all your gold. Wait. Sorrow? John was there. Oh. Then I took over Winter and Coltane and added up your gold. Hey, I'm level 3! Yeah, I think most of us are now level 3 and 4. Well, actually, no, Coltane is level 4, everyone else is level 3. Except maybe Sorrow. I'm level 4. Ah. Alright, so we started this adventure back uh. in November. Back in November of 2009. Or at least that's when the first session was posted. We actually started planning this back in August of 2009, so uh, it's almost been two years now. Now, I know not we all of you suck. have been around that long. <laughs> Are you saying I'm we younger suck. than two years? Dave, Nick, and I think Steven were here from the beginning, correct? Steven wasn't here from the beginning. No, I wasn't. No, Steven was the replacement for Jacques, no? There were only three of us to begin with. That's no, true. Was... That's true. Yes, Thomas, no, it, it was you, Thomas, I forgot that we started off with three players, Thomas, Dave, and Nick. I think Steven came in shortly thereafter, and then John came in to replace Thomas. No, 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 you're, you're getting it all backwards. John was there before Steven, surely. Yeah. 
Which is the one that sounded like a... Uh, Thomas. Not... Yep. Okay. You're gonna have to finish that sentence. <laughs> and you're correct, yes. John was the fourth player, and then Stephen replaced Thomas. Oh man, if... man. I wish we can go back, or if if I if we could go back and do this all over, I wish we had made certain changes. Thomas was a tactical uh, <laughs> a tactical error on my part. Uh, bad judgment. I thought I thought he would be the breakout character, like uh, what Jar Jar Binks was supposed to be, or for our, our resident Star Trek guy here, what Neelix was supposed to be. But unfortunately, he turned out to be exactly what Neelix and Jar Jar Binks turned out to be, i.e. hated universally by everyone. Uh, I thought he well, would be Neelix endearing... Well, Neelix had his moments. Neelix was later on, as later Jar Jar. On. Neelix was a shithead in the beginning. Later on, he got better. But in the beginning, he was a big shithead. Was he as bad as Jar Jar? No. I'll, I'll give you that. Jar Jar single-handedly ruined Star Wars for me. I think George Lucas probably ruined Star Wars for you. Isn't that ironic? Midi chlorians ruined Star Wars for me. Is that some sort of music file? I was thinking <laughs> the, No, Doug knows is, what they are. Wait, okay, good. <laughs> He's just joking. I don't know, because he didn't get any of the Star Wars references, so... <laughs> At least I... Doug, you... I'm assuming you're just pretending that you don't know, right? No, oh, yeah, it's just he, he pronounced it funny, that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's... See, I understand you. Alright, so I'll, I'm gonna have us discuss a few topics, uh, have you guys answer questions like, uh, you know, your best memory or your favorite character and stuff, so we're gonna have, like, a round table discussion on this. We're so the round asking, table, we dance whenever able. <laughs> Is that Monty Python? I haven't heard that. It's from... It's They yeah. sing it in the quest for the Holy Grail. I don't know the rest of the lyrics. There's something about... I like to push the pram a lot. Oh, is that from Spamalot? No, 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 no. Spam well, Spamalot is, is from. Yeah, yeah, based on Monty Python on the quest for the Holy Grail. And as I said at the end of last week's video, uh, for anyone listening on the internet, feel free to also give your thoughts, your comments, join in on the conversation. I know you can't be here real time, but we do appreciate your feedback. Alright, so I'll start with a question. Who is your favorite player character? If it's your own, that's fine, but of all the PCs we've seen over the, the past year and a half, who is your favorite? And uh, I'll throw that to, to, um, I'll throw that to Dave. I, I would say... Doug is really good. No, player character. Doug is... What do you mean player character? <laughs> Oh, you mean the oh, oh my god. PC, uh... <laughs> well, at least someone likes you, Doug. I like Doug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, if, Dave, before you go on, Doug, last session Dave found out how you've been playing Wreckage. <laughs> you gotta go back yeah, and listen to his reaction. <laughs> is this Wreckage on YouTube? Uh, is this Wreckage? Is this reaction It's on, on YouTube, YouTube, yeah. But yeah, Doug, then uh, he, he wanted to make Wintier shit his pants constantly, but I told him he could, I overruled him, because I said he have to, it has to be in context. You know, when you made him say silly stuff, it was in context, it made sense, but, you know, just pooping out of nowhere, not in context. I like how he that has means bowel Dave, disease. all those times that we were talking about good people and, like, multiple personalities, and Dave just wasn't picking up on it. <laughs> <laughs> to get back on track, we've established Doug that, no that Doug is... Dave's favorite. You guys are asses. <laughs> <laughs> we've established that Doug is Dave's favorite, favorite player, despite the fact that he made Wreckage sound like an idiot. <laughs> so, Dave, who was your favorite PC player character? Which I'm sure I did say uh... multiple times in my question. You did. Nah. I heard the word player. It was the distinct word there. But, hmm. I really like Zaxard. The cleric. Which one? That was crazy. <laughs> okay. 